Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. I'm Julia C. Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm super excited to have Jared Throneberry with us today. Dude with the best name ever. I just got to say, we also think of him as somebody from our, our friends at Bloomerang, but that name. That's that's great. Yeah, there's actually one other Jared Throneberry. He's a band director in Michigan. Uh, but besides <laughs> that, uh, I'll take it. Yeah. He's not like on Game of Thrones or something? No, I don't think so. That's far as I <laughs> Well, Jared, thank you for joining us. And, and I appreciate you being a good sport. Um, but we're going to talk about something really serious here today. Aside from Jared's fabulous name, we're going to be talking about volunteers and how we should look at them, how we can look at them. And Jared's going to give us some really interesting information about this. And, and hopefully we'll get to change some of our attitudes and preconceived notions that we have. Before we get into that, I really want to make sure that we thank all of our presenting sponsors. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, Fundraisers Friday, and 180 Management Group. Fundraisers Friday is a new uh, program that we have on Fridays just dedicated to the art, the craft, the science, the love, the pain, the torture of fundraising. And so I hope that you will join us tomorrow. We'll be on with Tony Bell at Mr. Nonprofit Consultancy talking about some really important things that um, I think all of us can understand. Let's get back though to Jared Th Throneberry. Wow, from Bloomerang. Talk to us about your journey and how you came to be here with us as this expert. Right. I I was actually looking for a position in the nonprofit world. And uh, but my background was really in IT and business analyst and quality assurance. And I found mm -hmm. this position at Kindful that fit me to a T. And it was it was the perfect description and it was the perfect company. I get to help nonprofits, but do what I do. Uh, and then uh, a year, year and a half, uh, well, maybe, yeah, about that, uh, they merged with Bloomerang and uh, because the two had both great systems, but they didn't all offer exactly the same products. So mm -hmm. we're trying to take the best of what was kindful and incorporate that into Bloomerang and give our customers just the, the perfect software uh, to manage their donors and, and raise money. So. Yeah, wow. uh, it's it's really great. Yeah, so it's a it's an internal role that I have. Uh, it's it's testing the software to make sure that what we put out is is great and in good working condition. So that's that's what I en enjoy doing. You know, Jared, one of the things that I really admire about the Bloomerang, I'm going to call it the ecosystem, is that um, I feel like the team in leadership they're always searching for new things. They're always trying to make improvements. Um, they've been out there, you know, buying other organizations, you know, uh, creating alliances, really an interesting way to do business. And um, for me personally, it seems like it's a model that the nonprofit sector can learn from because mm. we don't always like to play together in the sandbox. Right. Yeah. No, we're all after the same mission, right? We. We have nonprofits that are trying to do good, and that's what all of us are in for. And the best outcome of that is best for everybody. So, exactly. yeah, that's really the the mission and the the tone that we work with. I like. Yeah, yeah. Well, you do a beautiful job, and like I said, I I think we can all learn from that mindset because shoot, that's just something that is such a stumbling block for nonprofits, and you know. On the nonprofit show, we use the number 1.8 million, saying that 1.8 million nonprofits are registered in this country. And so that's a heck of a lot of activity, if you want right. to call it competition, I mean, whatever. It's just a, a beehive of, of activity. And so um, we need to be thinking more strategically about how we align. And part of that alignment I really want to get into with you is the concept of volunteers. Mm -hmm. Boy, this is a huge thing. Talk to us about what this looks like to you. Right. I, for many nonprofits, and maybe I'd say even most nonprofits, volunteers are the, the heart, the core of what they do. 
Uh, I know one in particular uh, that I work with, if you were to walk into their their office, you would see a dozen people, maybe 15 people walking around and doing things when really there's about four employees. <laughs> Out of the yeah. out of the yeah. whole group, but there's so much activity and so many daily recurring volunteers that uh, that you wouldn't think that because there's just so many people involved. And if you took them away, then that would just that would almost bankrupt, you know, in as far as employees go, uh, that organization. They wouldn't be able to do what they did without volunteers. So it's it's crucial to for many to find creative ways to get volunteers and to utilize volunteers. Right. But, you know, it seems like it's really fraught with a lot of, first of all, changing attitudes. Mm. You know, like a lot of organizations are like, um, we, you know, and I'm sure you've seen this, but they kind of like make busy work for volunteers. That it's mm -hmm. not always meaningful or really productive. Right. So I'd love to get your thoughts on that. And then the other piece of it is, I feel like, and we'll talk more about this, but um, the organizations are fearful of volunteers because they don't want to feel like they are muddying the water with converting them to being donors and things of that nature. And so mm. again, we'll talk more about that. But how do we change this mindset so that we are creatively using them? Right. Yeah. yeah. So to your first point, it's it's really important to always show the impact that a volunteer is giving. Um, it may be menial. It may be a, a task. It may be. Uh, and actually, frankly, I am I am great at doing repetitive tasks over and over and over again. I do not mind if it's just stapling papers forever. I will find a way that works and I will get that staple going and I like I will figure it out. I, some people are good like that. So that's, yeah. that's really the, one of the main points of, of this part that I wanted to talk about is finding the right volunteer for the right task. Mm -hmm. So if a volunteer doesn't feel like they're being useful or helpful in a partic particular area, it's probably right. because that's the thing they don't need to be doing. You need to find the other person who enjoys that, that mm -hmm. will, that will enjoy it and appreciate it. Uh, so that other volunteer we need to figure out what it is that they love doing and get them plugged in in that area. And then that way they feel uh, productive and yes. important. Uh, Let me ask you, I mean, you, you said this and it just dawned on me. Um, I'm hearing this from a lot of organizations as we've come out of the pandemic um, that they're getting calls. These nonprofits are getting calls from larger corporations who want to come on to their site and do some sort of volunteer effort as a team building exercise. Mm -hmm. And while that's great, it kind of puts some stress on an organization. So your example of the four, four employee organization, they might be doing the work of the angels, but can they really handle, you know, 45, 55 folks coming to their site that represent, a national bank or right. a tech, tech company. So how do we think about that? Yeah. Vol vol managing volunteers is not is just pushing everything off of your plate and letting <laughs> somebody else take it. It takes work yeah. to get volunteers to be productive. So mm -hmm. it, you, you do have to balance the concept of is the effort I have to put in to make these volunteers successful worth my time and effort or, or whoever may be on staff. Uh, so there may be situations where it's just not worth the setup to help them be productive uh, in order to bring them on. But if you broaden your scope and you can manage it correctly, the work that you put in to successfully make a volunteer event uh, can encourage them to, to do a great job that time, um, but to also be interested in your organization and to possibly get involved again in the future or in other ways. Mm -hmm. So it's not like if you have a limited scope, it's not just that one thing that they're doing. You could be possibly creating relationships that are really going to benefit your organization over the long haul. So you're 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 kind of treating this like a, a POE, a point of entry. Right. Where we're not just saying, here's some free labor, let's get these tasks done, mm -hmm. but let's start, you know, to to 
explain what we do and, and share with that magic um, of what's going on. Um, really an interesting thing I want to move into because along with this, you advise us to treat volunteers like donors, not employees. Right. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Most people in the nonprofit sector, they don't, they don't say this, right? Yeah. Yeah. What so that's, it's a, there may be a little more extreme of a statement than, uh, than I'm going to explain it to be. Uh, but if you have a healthy organization and you lead your employees, well, uh, the, 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 it's just a slight nuance between the two things. It may not be that different. Uh, the real contrast is in like an old school way of thinking of, all right, guys, it's time to get to work. We got stuff to get done. And like, that's, <laughs> That's not how a volunteer wants to come in and hear a welcome <laughs> to get started. Uh, so uh, an employee might say uh, to their employee uh, or employer might say to their employees, thanks for the hard work. You're doing a great job and giving the customers a, a valuable product. Uh, but to volunteers, you would say, thank you for donating your time and your energy. You're helping to support our mission. And yeah. so it's it's a similar thing, uh, especially if you have healthy and healthy employees. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's really about making sure you're not just treating them as something that could be brushed away or it's a one time interaction and you don't really care about the long term relationship. Yeah, I love that. And I think there's too many. I mean, as somebody who's volunteered throughout their whole life, um, you know, there are those moments in time when you show up and somebody gives you an orientation and and shares the passion of what the mission is. Mm -hmm. And then you're just like you, you know, you could be cleaning bathrooms, but you're so energized, you're you're ready to go. Right. Right. Versus, oh, just come on in, sign in and go over there. I mean, which is like a bummer. Yeah. And it, it doesn't align you to the passion of the of the mission or the passion of volunteering. Yeah, one of one of the favorite events that I've done, uh, Bloomerang gives all the employees hours to use to volunteer every year. So kind of like your sick time or your vacation time, we have volunteering time. Uh, yeah. And so every now and then there will be a collective group in a, a city that's all in the same place and we'll find a place to volunteer. We'll do it all together as a group. And one of the favorite ones uh, that I've done was uh, with one of our customers uh, and they provide shower shower systems mm -hmm. to um to homeless populations mm -hmm. uh, and so we actually met up with them ahead of time and we had this kind of debriefing and we talked about the software and how they use it and so we actually had like a work wow. think tank meeting which was really fun mm -hmm. uh, but we really got to hear about where they came from what they did why mm -hmm. they do it and the heart behind their mission like it wasn't just something that they do but why they do it and mm -hmm. then we got out to the place and we're, we're cleaning showers and we're spraying down, you know, uh, used parts of the, the bathroom yeah. and, you know, we're picking up dirty towels and, and moving things around. So it's not clean, happy work. No, we loved it. We love, and I tell everybody, if you need a place to volunteer, this is a great place to do it. And I would do it again. And I follow them on all their socials and I get their newsletter. So, uh, it was, it was, a great experience. And do you think that if if uh, you hadn't had that, first of all, that engagement and that welcoming, but that kind of lead in mm -hmm. um, that it would have just been like, what the hell am I doing here? I could have been right. at the art museum. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know? No, they did a great job once because we transitioned over to what we were actually doing. And then they kind of went into their what they would normally do with a volunteer scenario. Mm -hmm. And even then it was still a great they they did it well. They handled yeah. their volunteers well. They gave us the same mission and what we're doing and why we're doing it. And it was yeah, it was positive. I love it. That is a great example. Thank you for sharing that, because, you know, I think there are probably a lot of organizations that that would say, we could never ask volunteers to do that. Yeah. Right? yeah. They'd be afraid. They'd be like, oh, it, it's too gritty. It's it's too harsh. You know, we're gonna we're gonna lose people. Right. Um, so yeah, and, cool. And give giving volunteers uh, options or an easy entry is always a good way to start because mm -hmm. it may not be the only time if they're willing to do it and they're willing to do it for you, they're probably willing to do it again. Um, so giving them 
options of what they could do this or this um, and making it easy or, you know, giving them uh, uh, it, it takes that work that we're talking about to get into it to start with, mm -hmm. but actually preparing the situation so that they have an easy experience uh, to volunteer. Mm -hmm. And that has put effort on you to start with, but hopefully it's worth it in the long run. Um, this just popped into my head and, and um, I've, I've got to ask you this. What do you see in terms of the ecosystem of repeat volunteerism? Is it, mm. do you find that more of these, these um, engagements are just one time one offs or are you seeing people say, yeah, I could do this every month or I could do this every quarter or, you know, right. What, uh, they're more engaged. I actually, I, looking back, because I in preparing for this, I was thinking about all the things that I've done, all the places I've volunteered, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm like struggling to remember some of them because there's there's been a few, and uh, but I haven't kept up that with with that relationship, uh, mm -hmm. and it was a one time thing, and mm -hmm. I I think I would be willing to do most of those again, mm -hmm. uh, so it's really I think on the nonprofits yeah. uh, side to make sure that they build a relationship in order to uh, to bring me back or to ask me back yeah. or give me an experience that makes me want to come back. Exactly. Uh, yeah. It's it's such an interesting thing because, you know, I, I think there's so much um, of a parallel life and ecosystem to restaurants mm. and the nonprofit sector. Mm -hmm. and it's kind and of like, out. how would you, you know, if you didn't have, 50% of your guests coming back, you would go out of business. Right. Well, 50% of donors don't always come back to an organization. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of loss. You know, your, your volunteers, I mean, your board, I mean, your funders, your stakeholders, they're not coming back to your, your organization. Right. They're not going to be sustainable. I mean, just like in the, in the restaurant world, right? Mm -hmm. Basic business 101. Um, yeah, there's uh, so many that I've done where I've actually been the one coordinating the experience and talking <laughs> to somebody at uh, at the organization uh, to to do the volunteering. And so they have my contact information. They know me and they know that we had a good experience and no one's ever asked me to come back, like specifically, directly. Wow. Uh, so sometimes I get on a newsletter, you know, there's opportunities mm -hmm. and there's avenues to like communicate that. But a personal ask is is not beyond your ability yeah. or even just like the appropriateness of doing uh, just like, thank you for coming. I know you came six months ago with a group of people. Would you be interested in doing it again? We have this event coming up and right. like that would that's that's not beyond, you know, I think a, a reasonable thing to do. I know. So let's get into that more about building those relationships um, you know, it's shocking to me, it, it is and it isn't, I should say it's more heartbreaking to me to think that, you know, we get somebody like you, perfect example, cleaning the showers <laughs> for an unhoused population, gritty, grim work, and then you recount that as being one of your most positive volunteer experiences. Um, you know, we've got to be going back to these people that we've had some sort of point of entry. Um, and it's just a stunning thing. How many nonprofits are really, they kind of have a policy, if you will, in place mm. that we don't pitch our volunteers. We don't engage them that way, you know, and it's even if they're like one time or, you know, uh, legacy volunteers, what do you think about that? And how, how can we change that mindset? Yeah, I, I understand the hesitancy to not want to do a pitch right then. Mm -hmm. And that might even be appropriate. Uh, you, you know, thank you for, you know, the hour and a half that you did shuffling papers together. Would you like to donate? Like that, that seems like, uh, you know, maybe a bit of a, a like a, a bait and switch. Even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want it to come across like that. So the, yeah. I think the, you know, the best thing to do to start with at least is to, is to show them the impact. So first mm -hmm. of all, show them the mission and what it is that they're accomplishing and helping you get to toward a goal. Uh, mm -hmm. But then show them the impact of what it is that they did and engage with them that way. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So, so like following back up with them afterwards, if there was a, a fundraising effort involved yeah. to show them exactly how much they say or they, they made, uh, I, we, my daughter's in the band in high school. And so with the band boosters, we're constantly doing events to raise money and every mm -hmm. single one of them, we make sure that thank you for coming out to the car wash today. We raised a thousand dollars and that's mm -hmm. all thanks to you. That money is going to feeding them on a trip. Like, so how much impact you had, what the outcome of it was, and then that communication to keep the, the relationship going. Yeah. I love that. You know, one of the things I'm a fan of is at a uh, volunteer efforts is a takeaway kind of, it can be a panel card, it can be a, something really simple is a wish list. And if you are smart and you tag it to um, an Amazon shop, you can be like, you know, this month we need boys socks. We need, you know, um, soccer balls. We need whatever. And you can you can get them for us at this on this Amazon link. Um, I think that's a really powerful way to get people engaged quickly um and it's so interesting to me because i feel like a lot of people will spend more money with an organization buying stuff than yeah. they will write a check oh 100 you know what i mean and then you're like yeah i was there and and i was like to go back to your showers i was there cleaning and you know they could have really used some more ajax or they could have used some more bleach or whatever right um yeah but those Amazon shops are, I think, are such a great way to get somebody immediately engaged and feeling like they've completed a meaningful engagement and mm -hmm. filled a need. And then you continue the conversation versus that hard pitch, because I agree that that can be a little tone deaf. Yeah, that you. I mean, you can always, and you probably should, uh, always have like a next thing. So when they're done with their volunteering event, like what here, like you said, here's here's a, an area of need that we have. Here's yeah. the next event that we have coming up in the yeah. future. Uh, so that like give them a, at least a way to get back in touch with you, uh, in one way. And then another thing you said that I love is uh, is is talking about the area of need. People people are drawn to areas of need especially in like urgent situations yeah um, so whenever there is a need let your donors and your volunteers know about that mm -hmm. uh i i do social media i volunteer social media for an organization that's another creative way of of getting volunteers engaged just thinking outside the box and maybe think of stuff that people can do from home um, is always a great way. Um, but back to the point, I do social media for one of the organizations. We have like a help center and I will post things from time to time, uh, especially about our volunteers. We ever do a volunteer group, we'll take a picture of them. And then they're like, thanks for the, you know, thanks for coming out. That's a great sure. way to engage. Sure. Uh, but then uh, we'll post just like informational stuff or share mm -hmm. kind of news. Um, but the, uh, the other day, we had just a need for diapers, newborn size diapers uh, to give away. And uh, so I just posted that with a little graphic. I said, we're gonna need some diapers. You can drop it off at this time. That post got 20 times, 25 times more reach than anything else that I've done recently. Uh, because I let the people know that there was a need and they jumped on it uh, right away. So, so that's, yeah, that's uh, people, like you said, people are drawn to that kind of situation. Right. Well, and I think in modern society um, and modern retail, we can be much more um, immediately engaged and, and impactful. Right. I mm -hmm. mean, you that person's like, well, heck, I'm going to the big box store anyway. Um, let me, you know, turn my cart down that aisle and, you know, grab a bunch of diapers. And then before you know it, you've navigated um, that sense of I've I've created a solution, temporary, mm -hmm. immediate, and whatever, but you've engaged somebody. Um, so yeah, that's cool. And I think, gosh, I don't know, Jared, it seems to me like a lot of times we're like looking down the field for the big score, right? Huh. We're like, how do we get to the end zone of like the big ask versus like, how do we keep moving down the field in small increments, right? right. So we, we leave these, these, opportunities for engagement behind because mm -hmm. we're just looking for the big you know the rich donor so to speak 
Right. Yeah. Another way to do that might be to follow up with a, a survey, especially if it's if it's a new thing or a one time thing where volunteers came in. Uh, follow follow up with a, a survey of how was your experience Love and it. give them a chance to give feedback. And of course, you can you know give them ways to connect with you, too. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's a chance for them to engage, uh, mm -hmm. to follow up with them afterward, to get mm -hmm. feedback on how that actually did go, uh, a mm -hmm. chance to learn more, uh, a chance for them to volunteer again. Uh, and then you get ideas and they feel like they've contributed. You know, mm -hmm. at the same time, you could use that survey as the chance to give that impact statement of what, mm -hmm. what you did. Um, so, right. it, like you said, it's building the relationship, it, you know, because I would almost expect I volunteered. And oh, here's the email with the ask for money, right? But if <laughs> right. so, it's like okay, yeah, I saw that coming. But if I volunteered <laughs> and I got, I really want to hear about how your experience mm -hmm. was. What can we do to make it better for the next uh, next time? Then yeah. yeah, I you know I would I don't that doesn't take any skin off my back. Like I can do that. Right. Well, I don't you think that um, a it's not just a smart thing to do, but that it's like you can get some feedback that really maybe helps your organization pivot to something else or or make a correction or embrace a new direction or amplify something yeah I mean, you, you never you sometimes we're so internally focused that we don't see what we look like from the outside so that's the yeah. that's a perfect opportunity to get that yeah well jared you have been great i've really enjoyed this conversation and i I think that um, I'm going to brag on you a little bit. Not only do you have a super cool name, best name ever of any guest on the nonprofit show, I got to say so far, and we've done this show for five years, over 1,100 episodes. Uh, this stands out to me. Thank you very but much. You are an amazing community uh, participant. Talk to us really quickly before we let you go about the areas in your life where you volunteer and where you serve. Uh, so currently I am a treasurer for a organization called Drug Free Wilco, uh, which is just a drug coalition in the county that I live in. And I'm on their board of the directors. I just started because I was curious about what they wanted to do. Uh, and really, I got into that because we're foster parents. And uh, so I've done a lot of volunteering and effort. And of course, being a foster parent is nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. and so but I was wondering what was the thing that could help alleviate the need for foster care? And that's usually drugs and alcohol. So that's why I wanted to get into that organization. Uh, but I also do social media and website maintenance for a number of organizations uh, and even past organizations that I'll come back. Two nights ago, I had uh, a chamber of commerce I used to work with. And uh, she was like, I can't get into the Google forms. Can you set me up a vendor sign up sheet? And so I, you know, it took me 10 minutes to set up. That's a vo that's volunteering. You know, I got online and I set up a, vol a, a, a sign up sheet for them and it was yeah. nothing. But that's volunteering and that's helping somebody out. Yeah. Um, but I've been involved in, in Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Uh, awesome. That was a great experience uh, for me. And then neighborhood uh, organizations, uh, the band boosters and yeah. uh, w lots of one off things, too. Well, you know, it, you're the perfect uh you have the perfect spirit and in the perfect mix of talent because one of the things in the volunteer service arena and i know you know this but a lot of times you know we find people with big hearts and they want to help but we don't always find people that have the skill set that we need and right now technology is everything so for you to open up your i'm sure you don't have a lot of extra time but <laughs> that you're opening up that clock and you're saying okay i'm going to slot you in is really powerful and uh, just from reading your bio i wanted and from other folks at bloomerang talking about you i wanted to make sure that we could highlight that because it's really powerful um so thank you for coming on and talking about this uh this is such a big big topic and uh it has such a marriage to technology as well. So really important. Uh, Jared Throneberry, you can find him and all of the amazing talent over at Bloomerang. Bloomerang is one of our presenting sponsors as well. They've been with us from the very beginning, along with American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, our new Friday episodes, Fundraisers Friday, check us out. 
and then 180 Management Group. These are the folks that join us day in and day out so we can have these amazing conversations like we've had with Jared today. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, I'd be I would be remiss if I didn't say that uh, having a good software to manage your volunteers would be uh, a great place to start. So uh, you, that would be <laughs> something you should do. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge thing, and especially um, as the the way we volunteer and how and where and when we volunteer. This is just such an important thing. So um, you've been a delight to have on the nonprofit show. And we end every each and every episode with this statement. And uh, it goes like this, to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here again.